about themselves. Mm -hmm. And I tell people I had what I needed when I walked on that campus. Mm -hmm. And I had that confidence that, and those of you who know me, I, I can get along with anybody. Mm -hmm. And I know right from wrong. And because you're white and you get trying to get me to do something wrong. And that's what I used to tell my kids. Because my kids grew up in integration. And a little thing I used to tell them, if your little white friends can't come to your house, you're not going to theirs. Mm -hmm. See, that's, it's a mutual thing. And see, white people were good at that. Inviting one or two black kids to their children's party. Mm -hmm. But when it was time for their kids to come to your party, now all of a sudden it's a problem. Mm -hmm. We had that at Pompeii Park. The white teens yep. didn't want to come play out there. And that's one of the best parts in the county. Mm -hmm. And now, we can hardly keep the white folks from going out there. <laughs> but I'm just saying, I live this. This is over a span of time. But when you have a standard, and when they came to that park, they were treated with respect. We did everything, class A. Anybody tell you, any one of our opening ceremonies or something. And it has taken a time to get people to say, hey, this park is a bad. Because one of the things that hurt me so bad, one of the articles came out in the paper, and one of the white parents who didn't want to go in there, oh, the uh, crack houses all the way around the park. Now, those of you who know, you know who live around Pompeii. Yeah, of course. Jerry Smith, yeah. Winston Davis, of course. Mr. Pompeii. Yeah. You know, so why are you going to make a judgment like mm -hmm. that? And say the park, they didn't want their kid to come to the park. That's a good question. Yes. Why would they make it? Because perception. It's, perception. Huh? it's the perception mm -hmm. that we have had to fight mm -hmm. all our lives. Mm -hmm. Because we have the ills. Black people carry the ills of every other black person. White people don't do that. I'll give you another little example, and then I'll let somebody else talk. Mm -hmm. My sister <laughs> was in banking. She was one of the first black tellers in Boynton. Every time a black person came in the bank, the white tellers wanted to know, well, do you know so-and-so? Brenda finally told me, look, do you know all the white people in Boynton? <laughs> <laughs> then I don't know all the black people. <laughs> Were you, yeah, the, sorry. Were, you <laughs> the, were you the same age as Yvonne when she I'm came? I'm two years older. I'm okay. really, really old. But <laughs> <laughs> well, she was a senior. Oh, she you were a senior. Car, yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay, My tell us how it's like you to escort. Or did you volunteer? She volunteered. Yeah, that's what I heard. I didn't, yeah, too. I didn't know why I was here tonight. She just asked me to come. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I said I had a surprise for you. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I was a senior. I was 17, and when you're 17, you think you're really old and mature. Uh -huh. Maybe not old, but you're mature, you know it all. Mm -hmm. As we look back, we know we are children at yeah. 17. Yeah. Know nothing. Mm -hmm. My family came here in 1957. Okay. And from, where? <clears throat> from Michigan. Okay. We lived on 2nd Avenue, mm -hmm. the corner of Dixie and 2nd, that little house in the point there. Mm -hmm. And I went to Seacrest after 8th grade. <clears throat> down by what used to be well, old school square it used to be great for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mr. Fulton was not just a great principal; he was a great he human was. being, mm -hmm. absolutely wonderful. Did he live in Delaware? Yeah. I'm not sure where Mr. Fulton <laughs> lived. Was he was I didn't know anything. No, he was just wonderful. No, he was a principal of the year. I know that. He, he, he did live in Delaware. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so. Uh, I was on the student council, and uh, we had a, a meeting, and we were told, oh, this is what's going to happen now, blah, 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 blah. He did it very nicely, but we're sitting there, okay, you know, what's going on? And we would like somebody to volunteer to walk our <laughs> token. <laughs> what did he say? What did he call it? Oh, I don't remember. Uh, our first black child or something, but the word black not nice. used. Well, it's obvious. I'm a blue-eyed blonde and Yvonne isn't. <laughs> what can I say? Uh -huh. yeah. I think we're soul sisters. I think yeah. she does the same way. Okay. And nobody's doing I raised my hand. I mean, wh wh why wouldn't I? Mm -hmm. Why would I? Why wouldn't I? So I did. And I probably the next, oh, it was, oh, we had a student council meeting late in the day, the day before. Mm -hmm. I mean, late in the day, which was not normal time. Mm -hmm. Like at the end of school, practically. And so the next morning, 
of course, I didn't know anything. I, did we meet in the in, in his office? I don't remember. Probably yeah, so. Yeah, I don't remember. <clears throat> but I have a picture of come, us coming out at the end of the day, this guy. It was in the Delray News. And you can't have, and I used to keep it laminated. I couldn't find it. <clears throat> but he took a, a picture and the headline simply said, Negro student quietly integrates Seacrest. And what I found out is that they had blocked the roads, and that's what they didn't want the riots. No cars. I see. I didn't realize all this. No, this I didn't. Is something either. I uh -huh. learned later because they also wouldn't let me ride the bus. So that's why my dad took me. But later on, Mr. King, Dan King, my teacher from Carver, used to drop me off mm -hmm. at Seacrest on his way to Carver, mm -hmm. and he did that until I turned 16 and got my own little car. <laughs> <laughs> that was, you remember uh, that? Oh, I remember that. So I found out that's what happened. And they <coughs> interviewed that photographer. I think he's since uh, deceased for that article when they reunited us oh, for that 40th yeah. year. They brought us back to Seacrest. They took a picture of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because she I was trying to tell the story that she had called and wanted to know what had happened. Because mm -hmm. it was during Black History Month. Mm -hmm. And I guess it just piqued her history, whatever happened to me. And mm -hmm. that's how we did it. And, you know, we periodically get together now and have lunch and, you know, stuff. But it's just, I, I felt it was good to hear her side of the story. Mm -hmm. Because adults do things. You don't know what's going on behind the scenes. You really don't. You really don't. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was good to hear Miss Hudson. She and I talked yesterday of some of the things that she had mm -hmm. uh, experienced and told me about uh, as an adult. Because she was my teacher at Carver before I left. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, I I just got to tell you, know, I had wonderful teachers. I was a pretty good student, you know, I must say. But I missed having been there and I always say, I probably would have been a Tiger Bell if I had stayed at uh, at Carver because mm -hmm. I was really fast. <laughs> and when I went to Seacrest, I mean, they just never seen anybody like me before. You know, I outran everybody. I played better than everybody. So, yeah. Yeah, so. oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I wanted to, I wanted to say one thing. Yeah. One more thing because I don't want y'all to think that they just came and took us from the school and integrated. They knew two years ahead of time. I was just sitting there thinking about it. They knew two years ahead of time they was going to do this. Because mm -hmm. I was in eighth grade after college. Mm -hmm. They had students from Boca mm -hmm. to come to college. Mm -hmm. And we had student council meetings. <coughs> and then they had students to get with the black kids and talk with them. And they had certain ones to say, who would you pick to be your friend if you had to come together at school? Mm -hmm. This oh. one we was at college uh -huh. in eighth wow. grade. In the, the no, no, Derek and I was doing that great. Um, I know if I played football. Okay. You <laughs> said they had students, what they, they had white students, students, they had white white students, students come came to, to Carver. Come, come to Carver, and we had yeah. student council meetings in mm -hmm. the cafeteria, and they let us talk to each other. Mm -hmm. But they knew they was going to integrate the school. Mm -hmm. And then, but we didn't think we was going because they're, the ones that went to Derek Junior High, our ninth grade year, we didn't know they were going to switch crosses, right. but we still ended up going to Boca and some of the people that we met in that meeting at Carver, I bet I know, we became friends. Mm -hmm. Because I came with one, one guy, I was a friend all through high school, mm -hmm. and I didn't find out until I was about 24 who he was. Mm -hmm. And he and I was like this, and he was one of the Gambino kids. Mm -hmm. And he he just clicked with me. Yeah. And we, Everybody couldn't understand. His name was Steve. And he he lived on the beach in Boca. His mm -hmm. parents who lived in Boca because mm -hmm. dad was part of the mafia. Mm -hmm. But I never knew that until mm -hmm. I got grown. Mm -hmm. And he saw me at the age of 24 and we started talking. And mm -hmm. that's when I found out who he was. Uh -huh. All the kids, why be, why you always hanging with him? Why he uh -huh. won't talk to nobody else? Uh -huh. But he and I became good friends. Huh. Mm -hmm. And so they didn't just take us and throw us together. They they knew this was coming on. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Two years ahead. Do you, but have you heard from him it, recently? Making them better. I haven't seen him since I've been back, but we moved. Oh. She worked with IBM, and then we ended up moving to Orlando for oh. 22, 22 years or 21 oh. years. Now we just came back. Oh, but back I think we still, uh, by faith on we had a nursery out there Oh. when I was younger. Okay. So. Mm, that's good. Oh.
Hudson. All right, Miss Hudson. <laughs> I like to say, I started teaching in 1950 at Carver. And one of the things I think we missed out when we integrated was the nurturing that the black teachers had for kids. I remember from 1950 to 1968, each homeroom class that I had, I went and visited the parents, went to the homes, went to Boynton. And uh, I think the kids kind of missed that for the simple reason the kids were acting ugly in the classroom. I said, okay, I'll see your mama. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the bigger problem we had at that time was chewing gum. I know people now would love to have that for be the biggest problem. Right. But uh, you would meet the, your parents in church, you'd meet them in the post office, or you'd meet them. But we would we were assigned to go to these homes and talk to parents. And at that particular time, parents wanted their kids to learn. And we didn't have too many, we had, we had many problems. Now you have social, whenever you get people together, especially kids, they're going to have some problems. They're going to have some fights and whatnot. So they had that problem. But that was one of the things I'd like to point out, that when we integrated, we did not have that community <coughs> feeling with parents to talk about the children. But now, at, at Atlantic High School, we would send cards home, and we keep these cards in the guidance department. Mm -hmm. And if kids were not working up to their capacity, their card they were failing, each teacher would let the parents know by writing on these cards. Mm -hmm. And uh, then the parents could come and have a conference. But did the they? Did the parents respond to these? Some of them White did. White and black? Yes. Oh. Just a few, though. Just a few. No yes. matter what. Color, yes. right? No, just, just there's right. no community anymore. Exactly. Mm. <clears throat> so that was one of the things that we missed when we integrated. Mm -hmm. well, well, okay. Anyone else? I'd like to just mention that in 1948, oh. no, 1968, uh, after the teacher walkout, that many of the teachers who didn't get a job, matter of fact, I didn't get a job back at Carver. Mm. So they sent me to Seacrest. And it was all over the campus that I was a spy. <laughs> I, was, I was working for Hood. Who put it over the campus? One of the guys in the business was department. Was it students? Uh, was it one of the teachers in the business department. Mm -hmm. So then about, and Why did you do that? Just to be mean? I don't know. But he said, uh, I was working for the government, and I was a plant there, and I was in a uh, hood. But I was in the hub. <laughs> they sent me to, uh, to Seacrest at that particular time, but they didn't have anywhere for me to go. Uh -huh. And unfortunately, Martin Luther King was assassinated. Mm -hmm. And the next morning, I had to report to Atlantic High School. So I was in tears. Mm -hmm. But make a long story short, uh, I stayed there until 88. And 1971, when we integrated, we had a lot of turbulence, a lot of mm -hmm. bomb scares. But after that, things started leveling off. Mm -hmm. And I realized that I needed a job. Mm -hmm. I realized that I needed to uh, help students develop some positive attitudes about themselves. And uh, I also thought that uh, acquired knowledge was necessary if you're going to succeed. And I can look at Reverend right here. Yes. I had him. Yes, he did. <laughs> yes, he did. And, and, and most of them, they turned out, so many of them turned out well. You had Reverend uh, Taylor as a student? Yes. Yeah, but I had him at Carver. Oh, okay. But now when I went to uh, Atlantic High School, uh, Mr. Ripley was the principal. This is, the, this is in 1968, after the walkout. Okay. Mama, explain the walkout. You keep mentioning the word walkout. 
what was the walkout and why was there a walkout? Yeah, I, mean, I was a senior there for you. 